I'm doing the final check of this pattern before I upload it. So I'm just piecing together this A4 pattern. Hopefully it all makes sense in rows, A's, and then the B's. cutting off some edges and then folding others. I'm not very methodical with doing this, but hopefully those who want to try it, it makes sense to you. So I've got the strip that I cut. I made it one inch or 2.5 centimetres by 55. And I like to just use the bias binding maker for my ties. Just pop it in there, right side up, pull it out that end, and then just grab the iron and press it and pull. Press. Pull it out too far, just pop it back in. This cotton is just so beautiful to work with. Take the steam off the iron so you don't burn yourself. Um, and then when you get to the end, you've got it folded like half into the centre. And then I just fold like that. Definitely turn the steam off the iron and press in half. You can do the right sides together and sew and then loop turn but I just find with the very fine width um, I don't get a great result with the loop turner with this fabric um, but maybe I just don't have enough patience to do it properly but um, I find this method gives me a really nice finish and then I will just top stitch that edge you can like fold that in oops fold that in first and edge or you can just tie a little knot and clip the the um threads off so that's how i do my back ties and then that'll be a full length that goes in under the between the two facings and then you'll cut it in half to have the two sides of the ties to do hoping this is enough to do a bow at the back and yep it looks like it'll give it a nice bow with enough on the edge Okay, so you've joined the front to the back at the shoulder seams and press them flat. And then you get the other, so you've got a facing and the garment. And if there's a particular side that you like better, um, then you can mark that as your garment and the other one as your facing. This, this to me does looks similar, so it doesn't matter. Um, I've put a pin in where I'm going to come down for that opening. And I've also marked... Um, where the seam's going to come across and I'm going to sew down. That's on the pattern. I actually marked it with this tool that I've just kind of come across. I think it's called a sewing awl. Um, and it can, you just pin through on the um, paper pattern bit and it just puts a hole in the pattern, which I thought was easier than trying to mark with the chalk. So once you've got your front and your back sorted out, I just like to match up the shoulder seams first, make sure they're lying nice and flat. I'm going to go around to the other one, match that one up, and pop a pin in, and then 
everything, hopefully, if all the seam allowances have been done equal, it's quite important to get those shoulder seam allowances right because then um, everything sort of matches up and it all meets neatly. And then just pin around the neckline and you're going to sew around this with a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance and then we're going to put the back tie that we prepared earlier in between the facing and the garment and stitch that in when we stitch down that stitching line that's on the pattern as well. Okay, so you've stitched all the way around the neckline, front and back, across the side seams. And then if you want, well, yeah, it is a good idea to just clip into the curve. So you're clipping just to the neck line stitching. Don't cut into it. And you just, just helps when you turn this out to get a nice smooth curve. Um, I'm going to trim this back as well. I could probably have trimmed first. Just where there's some sort of major curves. It's called clipping into the curve, I think. Remembering all these terms from when mum taught me or reading all the patterns. Um, yeah, and then you can trim down. Yeah, that would have been much smarter to do it beforehand. Um, to you know about five six mil so you've clipped into the curve and you've trimmed that down just to reduce the bulk I've just marked you can see sort of from the ironing line but I've just marked the center back and then I've got these little points either side that were marked on the pattern down to this point which indicates where we're going to stitch to get that back opening because at the moment we've got a full circle and nowhere for no wave of the head getting in because it's too small so i've got the tie that we did before with the bias binding and it's just been stitched and i folded up the ends so we lift up one side so we're now inside there and again you can see the line of the center back but if you wanted to mark that more carefully you could and then you just find the midpoint of this folding it in half and you want to place it right up against that seam. So that's going to make sure that when you have the opening that those ties are right at the top of that neck seam and you can just pop a pin in there. Make sure they're out of the way to the side and then you're going to fold that back down. And you want to make sure this is nice and flat, everything's meeting where it should meet. And then if you wanted to get that pin out to pop it in the top it might be a bit easier or just be mindful of that, that that pins under there and then you're going to sew from right at the edge just to catch it in kind of a slight angle down to that point put your needle in pivot two stitches across the center line and then back up to the other point so you're in cap like you're capturing that tie that's under there in the lining so then when it's turned out the ties are on the outside if you haven't done that this before it might seem weird but it will make sense once you once you stitch so I would just to guide me give me a sense of where that is going to start I'd make sure everything was really flat get my point to where I'm going to which is there marked from the pattern I mean you could chalk chalk that line in if you wanted to if you've been sewing for a while, you'll be able to just guide yourself down um, or you can pin another couple of pins. Just want to make sure that the edges of the yoke are lining up. You haven't got anything um, off, you know, a bit skew if or anything and you want to make sure that you're catching that nice and flat so that they're even. And just be mindful of the way you put your pin heads. I would start here and then go down so I can pull my pin heads um, out as I'm sewing along and then I would go back up to here running it right through doing a couple of like back stitches here just because that's going to be a point where you, those ties could get pulled okay so I'm not sure if you can see that stitching line um, so I've stitched down left my needle in stitched one to the center one across 
and then back up right to the edge. The center back is right down through the middle and that's where, and we've kept that um, tie. Oops. Oh, I can't do that now because it's um, been sewn, so I can't show you that. Um, the tie is in there, in between those two layers. So we're gonna cut down through the center to get this opening happening. So you wanna carefully, you haven't got much to play with there. Um, you want to go down to that point, but not past it. So down to the stitching line, but not past it. And then you can trim up this corner stitching. Just be careful. There's not a lot of material there. You don't want to better to not take off too much than cut, with, cut a, um, a stitch. And then if you wanted to, you could understitch this seam, this hem, um, yeah, seam, to the facing. So you would work out which one, which side was your facing and do a very close understitch and it just helps to keep the facing in place. I find that if it's pressed well, and I run a basting stitch around, I don't need to do it, but um, some of you um, might like to do that. So once you turn this out, you get this really beautiful finish where the tie is sitting right at the top of that seam. You can see the other one here. So if you don't get that tie right to that top neckline stitch of stitching, it doesn't really matter, but it's just that you'll have a gap. So if you, if say you started it there, it would just be dropped down, which doesn't, doesn't matter at all. I mean, it's all very loose fitting top, so nothing matters too much. And then you just go around and slowly work out where all your bits and pieces are and turn it all in. The right way and you want to check this point down here you might need to do a little bit more clipping but this looks pretty good sometimes if your stitch lengths long and you, you know the two stitches that you've gone across are quite wide you need to do like a tiny little diagonal cut into those corners um, I mean you can do one stitch if you want um, but once that's had a good press that should sit nice and flat. So I'll give this a good press, but basically that is the yoke with the ties done. That's the back and that's the front. So I've given it a good press and you know, you wanna make sure you really roll out that, um, that seam. And I find that, I don't know, I know it should be exactly even, but I find that I choose one side to be the garment size and then just make sure that all the seams are rolling. Um, and you know, the other one is rolling just a tiny bit under so it's a really nice clean finish. And then that's the back with the ties. And obviously if you wanted to mix this up, um, you could just turn the top around and that be the front, but the sleeve is a tiny bit different on the front, front and back. The back doesn't have any gathers and the front does. But you could apply this technique to the front bodice in exactly the same manner. You could bring it that down lower or um, the, same, the same depth. You know, you could just try it on to see if that worked for your body. Um, I mean, you can even split the bodice in two and do a slightly different technique, but bag out two separate pieces with the back, which I think I'd, I'd probably do a pattern and show you you of those who are interested um, but this is for a back opening um, but the technique can work equally well on the front so I just make sure at this point that all of my edges are meeting I mean sometimes they're not perfect but like I say it's a nice flowy top so there's a bit of room for imperfection and um, just so you so you make sure with the next step because there's so much um, material to come so much volume I would just run like I've just run my foot width in so about six mil just a bit of a basting stitch around the side and the bottom up the other side and across there just to make sure it's all nice and flat it's all matching and then we can get on 
um, with the rest of the top. So next is the front section of the top. So this has been cut on the fold and there's two of them front to back are the same. So you don't need to worry about marking anything, but you do need to mark that point because this is the point that the top's gonna to join onto the yoke and that's gonna join onto the sleeve. So that's kind of a, an important point, 1.5 in from the edges there. So it tells you to gather this section on the fold. So I like to run to lines of stitching I just put it up to number five the longest stitch and you should do one with my foot the foot width in and then another one a little bit um, just running parallel to that um, but don't go over the 1.5 and then I just grab the top some people say the bobbin ones I don't know I've always done the top and then you just pull together this like I've said this cotton is just such a dream to work with um, it just seems to do what I want it to do all the time um, and washes beautifully too so yeah there's quite a quite a bit of gathering because it has to fit into that section there so you sort of haven't got that much and you've got to get that big section gathered to fit uh, where is it? that section so yep yeah, just keep gathering away until you've got your size. You can pin on and um, and check how you're going or you can just get a rough, you can just eyeball it, get a rough guide. Okay, so you've got roughly the width that you need gathered. You've got the center front and the center back marked with a pin and you've marked the center front and the center back on the yoke. So now we wanna join these pieces together keep your threads your gathering threads long because you might need to pull up a little bit more and then with right sides together so make sure you've got your garment side um, up which I think is the other side for me and you just start at one end you want to join the edges and you're going to pin I usually just pin one at each end and then I can even out the gathers as I go along so they're pretty good make sure that they're even and then you just pin the whole way along so you pinned it all in place. The gathering started just at that point. You don't want the gathering to start at the edge, but you want to pin to the edge there. But we're going to stitch, start the stitching in at that point there. And we're going to stitch at 1.5 centimeters all along until you get to that other point at the other end, because you need this section here. This is probably the trickiest part of the pattern, I think. I always find it um, you need that section there and that section there to join the sleeve section so you have to have enough seam allowance to be able to make another join at that point and if you stitch all the way there's nothing for the seam for the sleeve to join onto and that'll make more sense at the next step okay so you've joined the bodice to the yoke with the, all the gathering. There's quite a lot of um, threads usually hanging off as all the gathering threads and the stitching threads. I like to just get rid of all of them because there's enough going on. Um, there, so you've got your stitching line 1.5 in and you've stopped at that point that was marked 1.5 in from the edge to give you the seam allowance for the next section there. And you usually just do like a bit of a back stitch just because there needs to be a bit of strength at that point. And if you're going to overlock the seams at this stage, um, you can, but just don't run off the edge because then that will obviously close that up. So you want to come in the 1.5, finish off the edge with the overlocker or however you normally do that. And then we can press this beautiful seam, press up to the yoke, makes a really nice finish. And obviously there's a lot of material in this section and if that just is not 
what you're after in this top and you want to alter it a bit um, if you're uh, you know smaller or whatever um, you can take it out at that point make sure you leave that there because that's important for the shape for the sleeve but if you want to take any out of the width of this so it's not as full you can just chop it off there like just fold a little bit back or whatever have an experiment and then that takes out some of that fullness or alternatively if you want more of a flounce then you just add on to that center fold section to get the look that you're after Okay, so we're on to the sleeve after we've got the bodice joined to the yoke. And these are big, <laughs> which is probably why you chose the pattern. You like big sleeves. So what's important to mark on here is um, this notch here indicates the shoulder seam for, this is the back section of the bodice and the yoke, sorry, and this is the front section. This this is much bigger because it gets gathered, but the back section doesn't have any gathers. So you need to mark that so that you only gather, as the pattern suggests, that you gather from this point to this point. And I like to mark, um, I mean, there's two notches in the back to indicate back and one in the front, but I often get lost with all this fabric. So I just put an F can't really see that very clearly but just choose a different color chalk or whatever or put pins something just so you know when you're because you're going to have all this gathered and there's just a lot going on so i just mark the front so we've got a pair of sleeves it's important to make sure you've got a pair um, and if you've got directional fabric you might be need to be mindful of this as well i didn't i mean there probably is a direction on this but i didn't care too much because i didn't think it made a massive difference but obviously if there's stripes or a clear pattern so the next step is to find your notch find the long bit if you haven't marked it but it's the front section run some gathering stitches along here not past there and then you're going to gather that front section up to join um, something that has I've found has worked for me is that when I'm doing gathering and I've got to stop it in the middle of a section I just do a couple of back stitches at that point where I want it to stop because I'm I was finding when I was trying to gather up a section I'd be pulling from one end and just it would just keep pulling out so at least if I anchor that section then I can um, grab the threads on the other end and and pull up and it doesn't go beyond that anchor point so I've just found that after many years of trial and ever, error and lots of gathering. So I do love gathering bits and pieces. So you just want to gather that up to fit the edge of the yoke. So just to get an idea of how much you're working with, grab the yoke and you're going to be matching that point. The end of the gathers is going to be the shoulder. So it's actually not quite as full as I've made it there, but it doesn't matter. You can do whatever, pin, pin it in place and then and flatten it out. And then the back section is just a flat um, sleeve onto back yoke with no gathering. Before you gather, I always like to just mark the center back and the center front because um, even if you've cut a notch in there or chalked, I just mark it with a pin because it can get easily lost. Um, it, yeah, like I've just lost it. And then it's there. Mark that point so that when you're joining on, you can join center front and center back. So this is the trickiest bit, I, I think. It's not that difficult, but probably the trickiest bit of the pattern. Get your gathering bits and pieces out of the way and you're joining, so this is the sleeve, the front section, because it's gathered and you're getting the front of the bodice, so make sure it's the, the yoke, so make sure it's the front, you can tell by the neckline. And you're separating out where you left that seam allowance and matching up, the, there should be like a little point there. So you're matching that right into the center, but it's basically the edge of the fabric to there and you have to hit with a pin 
and your stitching that point in there but on this bit on the outside to get that really beautiful neat three point <laughs> seam and it's really hard um, I find it really hard but um, you know it doesn't matter it's under the arm it's not a train smash if you don't get it perfect but that's what you're aiming for is for the bodice section and the yoke and the sleeve point all to meet at that point there 1.5 in which is why you leave that seam allowance I have been doing this for years and years and I still don't get it quite right there's always a bit of a pucker but anyway I keep trying so that notch where you finished the gathering and you had your sort of anchor points that matches up to the shoulder seam and the other edge is the flat bit with no gathering that matches to the back again you've got another anchor point there where the bodice joined the yoke and you're going to hit with your needle right in that point and if you can get that it's like gold it's the best when you get it right in there that's what you're aiming for i just don't think i'm a precise enough sewer to get it right each time and you're just making sure that fits pinning it to the back and then when you come around to the front I've gathered up probably just a little bit too much and you want to just be mindful that it's nice and even so this is going to be running down the front of the top that looks pretty good and you're just going to pin that in place and you make sure when you go from gathering to straight stitching again just always be careful to put your machine back down the stitch length length back down the number of times I've gone full steam ahead and realize that I'm stitching at number five and have to re-go back over it at stitch length three or whatever it is so at this point you can do that seam you can sew along the sleeve if you want to and you're a confident sewer you can join this piece which is the angled section of the sleeve to the angled section of the bodice at the same time I mean you can pin it in place whether you sew it or not is up to you there's two notches that should match there just to make sure you know that you're on the right track and you can sew all the way to the edge so you don't have to worry about leaving any seam any going in 1.5 because this is going to be a different seam construction so you're going to go all the way to the end and you're going to come up here it takes a little bit of fiddling but again depending on the fabric that you're working with it will give you a little bit of ease so that you can um, make the seams fit and so the idea would be that you're sewing 1.5 you're going to hit this beautiful magic point here you're going to pivot around and sew the front section you're going to come around so the back section you're going to pivot your needle there and then you're going to hitting that perfect triangle which is the aim and then you come around and you sew this last bit of the seam under here and then that's the majority of the construction done and like I say this is, for me this is probably the trickiest part of of constructing this top is just getting all of those points to meet but if anyone's made this type of top before and you've got any hints for me please let me know so we'll stitch that now okay I got pretty close to hitting this I've just clipped into that was sort of there it's, it's like I say tricky to get around that but then I've just clipped I've clipped right into that point very very carefully to the point where I pivoted and then this is the moment of truth when you undo it and you see you can see the bodice has come into the yoke which has come into the sleeve 
and that's the triangle point that you're looking for. Don't think I quite got it as well on the other side. Um, getting lost in the in the sleeves. Yeah, I've just missed a couple of stitches there. So if you do that, just go back and work out where you've maybe haven't quite got to the point that you need to get to. And you can just make those adjustments with the stitches. But if it's your first time doing it, just have a go. Like I say, it's not a, not a train smash um, if you don't get it perfect. And then you can finish that seam um, pretty straightforward then to just overlock that's the angled edge around the back the front of the sleeve and then again down to that angled section and that's one side and then obviously repeat on the other side and nearly done okay so I've pressed I've um, finished the seam that we just sewed and I've pressed it all towards the yoke so it all sits nice and flat there and um, lovely Rachel can, from Rachel Can Stitch suggested that if you wanted to top stitch at this point would be a good point to top stitch so I probably wouldn't on a fabric like this but say you were color you had a nice color block or or even on this if you wanted to it would be at this point where all the seams are pressed towards the yoke and then you could top stitch along here or and along the front in the back all the way around the yoke if you wanted or you could top stitch wherever you wanted but it would be at this point before you joined the um, sleeves and the side seams if you wanted to do that so the seams have been finished pressed towards the yoke and top stitch option if you want to at this point okay so you've got your yoke joined to your bodice joined to your sleeve all finished all pressed if you're top stitching you're top stitching at this point whatever you want to do and then you now we need to join the sleeves now there is so much fabric i have in the past joined the bodice together which because it looks so similar to the sleeve so now i get into the habit of finding my neck finding my shoulders and laying that out and going yep okay that makes sense finding my sleeves getting all this voluminous beautiful fabric sorted so then you've got your sorry this camera angle is not brilliant sleeve and your bodice going down there and that's the seam that you want to do not the two bodices <laughs> which is very easy to do because they look very similar. So you're matching up your underarm seam. That's where I normally start. I pop a pin in there, then go down to the bottom of the bodice. Everything should be lining up, which it does. Pop a couple of pins in there and then go to the end of the sleeve everything should line up and it does that's good sharing this testing phase it's a bit scary anyway it's working which is good so then you sew the bodice around to sleeve very simple 1.5 seam allowance do the same to the other side and we have only got the sleeve um, elastic casing to go and the bottom hem and we are done okay so the side seams the underarm seams are done and finished so at this point you could try it on and just see like what length you want to do the seam it's made I'm about 174 centimeters and I like to wear it sort of um, just 
at hip level. So I just do about a 1.52 centimetre hem, that, that, that works for me. But um, try it on and see where you want to take your hem to. And similarly with the sleeves, um, I'll just overlock them and turn up a one, probably a one centimetre, 1 1.5 centimetre casing for the elastic. But if you want them a bit shorter, then this is the point where you can, um, you know, decide what you want to do. But really now we've just got to finish the armhole and the hem and it's nearly ready to try it on. So I've pressed, uh, I find with this cotton, all you need to do is press, press, I don't even pin for these hems. Um, so I've pressed up 1.5 centimetres and I would always start at the underarm seam and I usually start just beyond and I would stitch around, do a double back there. This is if you don't know how to do a casing. Obviously, if you do know how to casing, you don't need to listen to this. Um, so all the way around and then, you know, you stop about 1.5 centimetres, 2 centimetres before your, where you started and do the double back as well. You want to secure that and you just need a gap big enough to put a safety pin through because that's what you're going to thread your elastic through. Now with this really light cotton, I like to use a really fine elastic. I just feel like it sits nice. It doesn't weigh it down. It's um, literally three mil, I think. Um, and then when I thread it through, I don't sew. It, it's too small for me to sew. So I just like tie off the ends. And Or if you can't get hold of that, this is more of a standard size, kind of a point. 5.6 mil um, and you would just thread that through the casing you should just attach the um, like that the pin and put it through the casing which I'll show you once I've sewn it I it depends on how loose you want it I think I worked out that about 25 centimeters is good um, for each arm so you can measure 50 and chop it in half or 25 and that gives you enough to when you have to join it up to have a little bit of an overlap as well but obviously measure around where it's going to sit mine normally sits around here um actually this is a bit tight <laughs> you can see um so yeah bit of trial and error with the elastic but um i like the fine stuff for this fine cotton so i've made the casing so you can see there that I started there, ended there, left a gap. I've put my pin on my little skinny elastic because that's what I prefer. And I'm just going to thread it through. It's a wide sleeve because it's got the puff that we all love. Um, just be careful that you don't thread the elastic too far through and lose it in the end. I just put a pin in the end there in place but just keep an eye on it because sometimes you can lose it with the pressure just keep going around I hope you've all enjoyed making the top up to this point in time if you've listened to all of these videos hopefully they've been helpful I know that I learn when I can see things rather than um, writing I mean I wrote the instructions for it but sometimes it's hard to describe something it's better to see it so once you get out the other end you can take that out and I mean I'm sure this is not what the professionals do but I just tie a little knot I haven't found that it annoys me I think because there's so much volume and I just pull it as close as I can to the end there as I say if you're using the thicker elastic you just take it back to the machine and do a little zigzag and just pull that back through you've still got your opening there even out the gathers and then just pop that back on the machine and enclose that stitching and your elastic is done I have done the hem already so I did about close to two centimeter hem give that a good press and nearly ready to turn it in the right way and she's done so you can turn it inside out give it a good press check that there's no threads sometimes there's some gathering threads hanging around um, 
have a good look over it and be proud of what you made. I'm going to go try it on. Hopefully I can get it over my head with this bow done. I don't think I can. I'll try. Okay, so she's done. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with the pattern. I have lowered the neckline slightly from the original. Um, I think it just sits better. Um, yeah, I've written the instructions and I had done all these little videos, so I hope either way um, works for you. Um, there's a, lots of hacks that you can do. Like I said, if that front round neck doesn't work for you and you prefer the opening that can be transferred to the front, the same construction, um, it can be lower. I actually can get this over my head with it done up like that so I don't have to tie it each time. Really beautiful voluminous sleeves. Only tricky point probably is that little intersection there, but all in all, I think it's a gorgeous blouse. Um, for winter, I would probably extend that sleeve at the point of the pattern about here and give it length. It makes it a little bit um, extra yardage because you can't get the sleeve pattern out of the width of the 110 wide but if you had wider fabric you could extend that sleeve easily. This sort of sits right at my elbow once it's puffed up. But I can't wait to see everyone who tries it. Please share um, your makes. I'd be thrilled, thrilled to see. Um, I'm excited that I've had the opportunity to learn all of these new <laughs> skills to digitize a pattern and get onto A4 and A0 and write instructions. So who knows, this could be my new obsession. Thanks for following along and encouraging me.